Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about this book, Glitch by Lee Rourke. Uh, full disclosure, uh, this was published by Dead Ink, who published my last book, and I asked them for this review copy. Um, Glitch is Lee Rourke's third novel. I've read them all uh, in order, I think, the, the order that they came out. And uh, I've enjoyed them all, but this, I feel, is, is the best uh, by far. This is an absolute five-star read for me. Uh, the book comes out on September the 5th, by the way. Um, so the book starts off with uh, a British engineer over in America and uh, he works on their national grid, you know, the sort of electric pylons that go across the country. And he talks about the enormous power and the surge of electricity that one can feel and experience and it can even go through the body, uh, leaving you unharmed when you're on top of the pylons doing the work that you have to do. And it's almost like a sort of a cosmic power. It's certainly bigger than, than the normal human power that one could exert on Earth. Uh, and he's coming back to England uh, for an operation on his hand. He's got some sort of uh, injury, sort of RSI meets carpal tunnel, but sort of more serious than that. So he's going to have his hand operated on, uh, on the NHS. But he knows in his own mind that he's coming back to England. He's not going to return to America to that job. And the book starts with him on the plane, uh, on the flight home. And the engineer in him marvels at, you know, how aeroplanes work, how, you know, man has constructed this thing uh, that sort of, you know, overcomes gravity. Uh, but he's also aware that in any kind of sort of engineering, any kind of machinery, there could always be something that goes wrong, a fault or what is called a glitch. And indeed, on the flight back, uh, something rips a hole in the fuselage, uh, there's decompression of the plane, and amidst all the chaos and everything, uh, he gets his camera phone out and he's recording, uh, you know, the, ostensibly the chaos. But what he's interested in, his interest is in, is the glitch nature of this, in that it goes fuzzy, it's out of focus, you know, pattern that mankind yearns for and recreates from nature, recreates in our machinery. Uh, there are flaws in pattern. You know, pattern is not perfect. And this is what this book is, is about. It's about peeling back the curtain of reality, of surface reality, of what we take in through our senses, to see the little glitches and the faults in the pattern, and that pattern is not perfectly symmetrical. And, you know, what can that tell us about the world? And... Uh, Rawls' contention in this book is that you can only begin to appreciate what is behind the curtain of reality, what those glitches are, what those flaws are, what the stains, the out of focusness, uh, the cracks, the fissures. You can only approach them through art because this engineer, when he was growing up, was turned on to poetry by his mother. And I'll come back to his mother in a minute. And, you know, it seems as though this character's life could have gone in one of two ways. He could have gone down the poet, the poet route, the artist route, or what he did choose for in the end was the engineer. But the poetic soul, or at least the poetic sense of curiosity, still resides in him. And, you know, his mum bought him a book of Wallace, Stephen poems, Wallace Stevens' poems that first turned him on to art. And then he did sort of investigations into his own sort of likes and dislikes. He liked Warhol's sort of homemade movies because there were always glitches in those, you know, bits where the camera sort of has only got a, you know, a pulse of light or it's out of focus or it's pointing at the floor or it happens to pick up cracks in the wall, you know, whatever. But he did go down the engineer's and, and the engineers. Room. And I think this is a really interesting idea. This book, which I think has things in common with Tom McCarthy, Tom McCarthy's work, such as Remainder and uh, Satin Island, and even C to some extent. You know, what is the nature of, of reality? How do things hold together? You know, what are the connections? What do we think are connections, but are just us, you know, falsely grafting them together? You know, synchronicity and things like that. The other half of this book is one of the most tender and touching things. Uh, portrayals of relationships between her son and her mother and his mother because his mo when he comes home to England he finds out from his sister that his mother has terminal cancer late stage terminal cancer which he didn't know she claims that she sent you know him sort of text messages uh, which he didn't get so again a glitch meant that he didn't find out that this fantastic you know sort of put together being of his mother who he owes so much to in his life 
is at the end of her life where you know things are going out of focus things are going gauzy because of the nature of the disease affecting her brain you know the tumors and everything um, and as i say it's one of the most touching portrayals of a father mother sorry a mother-son relationship you know there's no recrimination on either side there's only pure love and it's not unconditional love they have a genuine relationship they have a bond you know as i say she helped him start to express and discover who he was as a child through things like art they're on a beach as you know when he was young and she races over and finds this this sort of stone of amber a gemstone and she explains how amber is formed with a glitch you know it is the faults that give amber and mo most gemstones their beauty because the light sort of bounces off all the facets at strange angles and that's that's what gives it beauty other glitches that he increasingly discovers you know the, the village that they they live near is gradually being consumed by the sea it's erosion you know sort of eats up the coastline and, and the whole thing will one day fall into the sea so you know all the time now he's back home he's more and more aware of glitches which makes you think he's going to fall more and more on the side of you know we know he's giving his job up what's his next step going to be is he going to sort of try and reconnect with his artistic side uh, there are other characters in the book there's his sister and her, her husband who are very much sort of you know money heads they're affected by the the recession after the the banking crisis um but i think for me that the, the heart the center of this book is this dual quest for you know art and imperfection and what that says about the world and this this deep deep relationship between mother and son so you know this was a really really good read i felt five stars so till next time thanks very much